In this video, we're going to complete example one, and we're going to learn how to rationalize the denominator for each example below. So what does it mean to rationalize the denominator? Well, basically, we're going to take the denominator for each question, and we need to turn them into whole numbers. Anyway, let's get started on question A. You will notice that our denominator is a third. It's the square root of two. We want to change this to a whole number. We want to rationalize the denominator. So how do we do that? Well, if I have the square root of two, what should I multiply it by so that I get a whole number? Well, it's quite simple. You multiply it by itself because the square root of two times the square root of two gives you the whole number two. So what we need to do is we need to multiply our denominator in question A by itself. Now you're allowed to do this as long as you multiply the numerator by the same thing. You need to multiply it by the square root of two as well. So one times the square root of two will give us the square root of two. And the square root of two times the square root of two equals two. So our denominator is now a nice whole number of two. We've been able to rationalize the denominator. Now, some of you might be saying, well, sure, we rationalized the denominator, but now our numerator is a third, and that used to be a whole number. What's the point of this? This actually comes in handy when you're trying to add or subtract fractions. Because when you add or subtract fractions, you need to make the denominators the same. So it really helps when you're denominator is a whole number. Anyway, let's now move on to question B. This time our denominator is the square root of 5, and we want to make this a whole number. We want to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply root 5 by itself, because the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. Although, if I do this, I have to multiply the numerator by the square root of 5 as well. 10 times the square root of 5 is just 10 root 5. Root 5 times root 5 gives me the whole number 5. Now we've been told that we need to also simplify these, not just rationalize the denominator. And for question B, we can simply go 10 divide 5, which is 2. So we now get 2 root 5. And this is great because originally I had a fraction and after I rationalized the denominator, I ended up with something that wasn't a fraction. And that's great because fractions are always a little difficult to work with. I'd much rather have something that's not a fraction. Okay, now moving on to question C. Once again, I'm trying to rationalize the denominator. I've got a root 3 for my denominator. I also have the whole number 2. It's really the third that I'm trying to focus on here. So I simply multiply by the square root of 3. And whatever I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator as well. So 9 times the square root of 3 is just 9 root 3. For my denominator, I've got 2 times root 3 times root 3. So I'll start with the 2 down below. And then root 3 times root 3 is the whole number 3. So I simply multiply my 2 by 3. So I have 9 root 3 at the top, and 2 times 3 is 6. So my denominator is 6. Now I need to check if I can simplify this. I can simplify my 9 and my 6 by simply dividing them both by 3. They're both divisible by 3. 9 divided 3 is 3. So our numerator is now 3 root 3. And 6 divided 3 is 2. So my denominator is now 2. All right, we'll move on to question D now. So my denominator has a square root of 10. So I simply multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 10 here. So my numerator will now be 15 root 120 because 12 times 10 is 120. For my denominator, I've got 4 times 10, because root 10 times root 10 gives me the whole number 10. So my numerator stays as 15 root 120, and my denominator is now 40. 
because 4 times 10 is 40. So I need to do some simplifying here. And this time, not only will the whole numbers simplify, but the third will simplify as well. So what I'm going to do is, down the bottom, I'm going to simplify the square root of 120 separately. So 120 can be split into 4 and 30. So I will split it into the square root of 4 times the square root of 30. Now the square root of 4 is just 2, so I can now make this 2 root 30. Anyway, going back to our question here, we now have 15, and we're multiplying this by the square root of 120, which is the same as 2 root 30. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times the square root of 30. And my denominator will stay the same. Now 15 times 2 is 30, so I now have 30 root 30 at the top and 40 at the bottom. Now 30 over 40 is actually the same as 3 over 4 or 3 quarters. So I'm going to simplify my whole numbers and have 3 root 30 over 4. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.